Hello, everybody. Welcome back to MLIO. I'm not entirely sure of what day it is for the tournament, but I, uh, I, I guess I've got Doof here with me. I just need to ask him a question about uh, what uh, what sort of play is this playoffs or is this still group stages? Okay, okay. So this will be the group stages between uh, God's Valley and Invictus Corp. Uh, and we'll get straight into it. I believe this is a best of three, so I'm excited to see what the teams can uh, provide with with us with some cool games, I believe. Uh, we're going to see the hands are being banned out. Actually, uh, I believe that's one of Chong's heroes. That's definitely worth bringing banning out in this game. I see lots of. Not sure about this Roger ban, <laughs> but I guess Tony has been playing this hero quite a lot uh, on the Roger. Uh, he's very talented with it, but I feel like personally. Roger is not the strongest here at the moment. But uh, Invictus Corp, they're willing to ban it out. Being a bit scared of it, respecting the Roger a bit. Uh, and now CC being banned out from God Valley. Uh, that which makes a lot of sense. Uh, this hero is very strong. It seems to just do so much damage. Like, not caring if you're tanky or if you're... a uh, Squishy target just shreds you, as well as being a tanky hero herself, which makes it just impossible to play him. As a last sort of a target ban against Tony, plus Shady, I guess, but I don't think Shady's jungle. But the uh, the Lancelot ban does make a bit more sense as well. But uh, there's quite a few things left open in the field here, uh, like the Diggy and the. Um, and I don't know if, I mean, people people are seeing that Nolan is not anywhere as strong as he was without that Purify in his ult. But uh, I think he's not really worth picking up at what well, at least both of these teams have decided. As we're going to see a carry being picked up by Bendu from Invictus Corp. Not entirely short. It's just like a generalized sort of pick. So why not add it? I will choose my own path. As well as an R lot to sort of balance things out. I mean, the R lot is going to be great. Uh, I don't know if it's still a flex pick with the changes to his second skill, but I'm sure he can still be picked in sort of any sort of game, really. Uh, Tokolosh and Kaori will pick up the Aurora and the Hanabi. Uh, as I've said before, sometimes I... Not not too as big of a fan of this uh, this Hanabi pick. I feel like it does take a lot of time to come online, and it does need to, a decent front line as well. So there's like two conditions that uh, God Valley are giving themselves here in order to take this game, or well, at least for this Hanabi to have some farm. But yep, Vex Hanabi being picked out as well. Um, I'm not sure I like this this uh, this pick into the uh, the Xborg. Just because he ca he can get on top of you quite well, and he can't burst them down. That's sort of what Vixana excels at, is the uh, the bursting part of people. Sorry, guys. As you can tell, my I am a bit sick, so if I sound a bit different... <laughs> you know what it is. Anyway, we're going to see the, the, the Tigreal. Being banned out as well as the Minotaur as well. I mean, I feel like, yeah, with Diggy being not banned out, I'm not entirely sure as to why both teams are respecting these set tanks with the bans. Uh, I assume that both teams just don't really want to play it. Play the Diggy, so. I guess it's sort of in a way that they're sort of dissuading each other to pick the diggy right because uh, you know if you ban up minotaur then what point is there to pick diggy and you know that's the sort of mentality i'm not saying that's true but that's the sort of mentality that they might be going for in this situation uh as we're gonna see c quatre gonna be going for this carmilla i really like this pick a lot this hero a lot I'm, it's okay in this game uh but i really like the the sets that she can do with the ulti as well as Super Shady picking up the Grok. We haven't seen this here too much. At all, really. Sort of fallen out of, out of favor in the meta. It's uh, definitely an interesting tank to pick up right now. Uh, it does do a lot of damage, the Grok hero. 
it's sort of a bit a more more damagey sort of tank that you have in your team to work with, which I don't mind. Uh, uh, excuse me, I don't, I don't know if you heard that, but that was something else. As we want to see the sun being picked up by Chong. Okay, so this is the sun jungle that I've been seeing a few players in the South African server picking up. Uh, I think it's not too bad. Uh, it's definitely it definitely scales very very well uh, with the sun uh, clones inheriting attributes from the main hero percentage and it goes up to like 100% so you're basically fighting three heroes at once and that's a big advantage to have. Hey yo doof, uh, what up? You looking at this game? Are you ready to tell me what your quick thoughts are in terms of the drafts here? Yeah, uh, yeah so I just got back. Welcome everyone. <laughs> uh, this is... MLIO group stages, God Valley versus Invictus Core. And just looking quickly at the draft here, yeah, I'm actually quite a big fan of uh, what's going on with the Invictus Core. I mean, they do have the, the carry. It was still pretty good, even though you're going to build a tank. Um, we have the Arlot, really uh, strong hero in the early game. I, I mean, uh, and he does go well into Terizla if you play it quite well. And then we have the Carmilla, so I really do like their one, but I'm also I'm I'm kind of um, also going to side with the God Valley because they have so much set potential and damage along with it. So uh, I I don't I don't really know what to pick here. Uh, I just want to point out this interesting interesting strategy coming out from Super Shady here, where he blocked the minions in the mid wave with his uh with his wall so that they spawned a bit closer to their tower. That's a bit of a strategy from Dota. It's called uh, like blocking creeps, where you do it with your body because there's hitboxes. But the advantage of doing that is that it's it's a bit closer to your tower. And so it's a bit, you're a bit harder to gank because you're a bit closer to the tower. But in ML, I don't feel like it's that necessary in the mid lane just because of how fast the minions are cleared anyway. But anyway, we're going to see... Oh, I mean, already a gank on the bottom lane coming in from Super Shady and Tokolos. Should be an easy kill for Kaori. Bendu getting taken up very early in this game. Look at uh, the top lane, look at the Teresla and Arlot. Jin Wu uh, gets away quite easily from from the Arlot. But we might be seeing a bit of an invade on the sun in the blue buff there. Okay, I mean, we're gonna look for it, but uh, sun does secure the blue buff for himself. Going into that last uh, jungle, jungle creep here, should be getting level 4 from that. Uh, which I think is pretty good timing. Uh, I, I feel like x Tony jungled a bit faster, maybe due to his emblem. So we're going to see an initiation coming in from Tony here onto Bendu. He's going to take a huge amount of damage from this last standard. He's going to fall down. Bendu taken on by Tokolosh in the end, though. Chong with C Quatre going, just getting out of here for now. Uh, I mean, both junglers have Season Hunt. Excuse me, never mind. Tony does not have Season Hunter, but he somehow got level 4 before Chong. I think that might just be a product of x being a bit of a faster clearer. As I said, Sun doesn't really... He scales a bit better in the late game. Oh, actually, Memphis on carry, getting Tokolosh's passive activated there. And now, Tony with the last insanity, should be able to get this Vexana kill. Oh no, he just barely misses out. He's going to get punished by Memphis on carry. Tony being taken out. Super Shady hit by the final slash. But he will just be fine. As we're going to have the turtle being spawned up right now. And Chong has a pretty good position to take it. Yeah, I mean, it should be, it should be quite, uh, I mean, Jinwoo looking for that uh, Flicker ult, uh, Chung knows about it, so he's just going to be a bit more careful, but, you oh. know, gives... But there it comes out, we're going to yeah. see that Flicker ult coming in from Jinwoo, and he actually takes Chung down. Very well played by Jinwoo there, with the Flicker penalty zone. As now Tony's just going to have a free turtle for himself. Yeah. But didn't uh, Memphis uh, take out Super Shady there? Oh, no, no, sorry. Uh, didn't he take out Tokolosh? He took out someone, I'm quite sure. Yeah, I think he took out someone. So it wasn't the awful trade. Uh, Tokolosh definitely had, yeah, struggling a bit to stay alive versus this big jump sort of team. But anyway, we're going to see in the bottom lane. Kaori, with the help of Super Shady, will take out Bendu for the third time. This carry really is just not having a great game here. It might be time for Sequatre to maybe either babysit her or, you know, make more aggressive plays to make space for her across the map. Yeah, I mean, um, 
Carrie, despite being on the farm, you know, getting ganked on like quite early in the game, she needs to play a bit more careful because the the way like if she keeps doing this, it's just gonna be turn out really really bad. She's not going to be able to uh, stand against the Hanabi uh, soon. So yeah, needs to slow it down from her side. Mhm. Mm exactly. Uh, and I feel like Chong as well is sort of struggling against this Expo matchup. I mean Chong. The sun here has always been this kind of bad theoretically in MLO. I mean, oh, look at this. We're going to see Pimuki getting taken down. No chance to live there. The Formula Hydra ultimate pop, but didn't really do too much. But just uh, just theoretically, sun as a hero in ML is is just not not the best. Oh, actually. Bendu actually gets a kill on Takara here. That's going to be pretty big. That's big, but he gets taken down, and his tower is, uh, is about to fall as well, so... I don't know if Quattro is going to be able to defend this one, yeah, I mean, the minion's pushing in. Maybe he could have, like, at least, like, protected a bit, but, I mean, at this point, I feel like... Yeah, he might as well just let it fall. You do see Chong doing a bit of counter-jungling, taking out Anthony's uh, blue buff there. Oh yeah, I mean, that's pretty good stuff. Uh, Tony is quite significantly far ahead of most of the team from Invictus Corp, but Chong is so somehow managing to keep up a bit in the farm department. But the Lost Insanity mid, just going to take an easy kill onto C Quatre. As now, they're going to, God Valley going to look towards the turtle. It should be easy enough for them to take here. Uh, but Chong, hitting the little wonder here, uh, needs to be quite careful of Jinwoo. He has proved that, Jinwoo has proved that he can take out the Sun Hero. I mean, that's what I, that was the point I was leading to, is that there's so much AoE, sort of, EXP laners or, or junglers, you know, that can just take so much advantage of the multiple targets from Sun in the early game. Uh, easy retribution for Tony, by the way. But, uh, taking advantage of the AoE damage with, like, pulling Spell Amp, Spell Vamp, I mean, you know, it's 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 just like free real estate when it comes to hitting all these clones. But as I said, in the late game, those clones start to become a real problems. So we're just gonna have to see Sun try and get there. Oh, a big stick coming in from Carmilla here. Took them out quite nicely, in fact. It's gonna be Bendu coming in with a damage. Lost Insanity has been committed, though. It actually popped a bit early. Bendu, trying to live through this one, will be able to. Surprisingly, no one has died yet. But we're gonna see, finally, Tokolosh getting gone on. Bendu falls from Jin Wu, but Tokolosh will be taken out by Chong. And the follow-up here, Kauri gets final slashed here by Memphis on carry, but Memphis on carry. He's gonna get blown up by being a bit too aggressive, as well as Pimuki will be cleaned up by Jinwoo. As God Valley are being quite aggressive in this stance here. With a pretty solid lead. Yeah, one of my problems with the Sun pick is that it's not really making the best out of the Carmilla pick. I mean... The only, the only heroes that can actually make proper use of it is is uh, the Arlot and the Vexana. And it's n sometimes it's not even the easiest thing to get your skills off on Vexana because um, like there could be someone focusing you, for example. And yeah, yeah you could just panic and, uh, and just miss all your skills. So mm -hmm. whereas if it was an Akai, for example, you could just stun one person and everyone gets stunned. Or Fridgen or... There's so many heroes that can take advantage of, of Carmilla. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, Chong. That's even a bit of danger here. has to use that jump away. Sun is a pretty... Like a... Uh, like a oh, excuse me. We're going to see a big fight in the mid lane here. Big ult coming in from Carmilla. But as you said, there's not the best follow-up for it. As Kari will take out Memphis on carry. Jinwoo will finally fall, though. Bendu being able to take him out with that true damage. So, a bit of a... A bit of a... Cool trade for... For Invictus Corp to take here, for sure. As yeah. Tony does finish out his immortality now. So he's going to be able to play real aggressive. He's going to get his Farago armor taken out here. Though. As I said, he has that second life to work with here. Well, I like three more lives, honestly. Oh, we're going to see the retribution. It's going to be easy for Tony. And Kari as well. Finishing off a, new, a big item here with the Golden Star. Finished the full Trinity, in fact. At eight minutes, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, Sunny is really struggling with his damage right now. I mean, as we can see here, there's only um, War Axe and Corrosion Side finish. finish. War Axe. He needs to have the 
I mean, Oax is, is is pretty like it's good, but I think you do need the Demon Hunter Sword and maybe even the Golden Staff. You need that for Eternity, for Sun's damage to start showing tr true. But I, f I feel like War Axe, Sun's not really a hero in my eyes that can use him too well. That's like, because he's like traditionally a trinity hero, right? Yeah, you know, like uh, he does, most of his damage comes from basic attacks. And War Axe, he's not going to be able to make the best use of that additional spell vamp uh, aspect of War Axe. So, I'm not sure how I feel about this pickup. I mean, you can uh, just trigger the stacks quite easily by using the, the first skill. Look, look at that set by Camilla though. Takalosh is going to be able to take him out, but... I feel like the fight's gonna continue either way. It's gonna be Jin Wu going on, but he's gonna get taken out by, by Chong. Tony with his immortality has popped here. He might want to pop the last insanity. He will get the Kimega kill onto the carry. He's in a bit of danger, but with that festival of little blood, he's gonna clean up the floor. It's now God Valley taking an amazing fight for themselves. This could lead them to some big pushing. Yeah, you know what's crazy is that if the gold lead wasn't that huge. I think that would have been a pure wipe for the side of Invictus score. Yeah, that's because of that Carmilla set, isn't it? Yeah. The sets that uh, the Carmilla and the Arlot are doing is actually so good that mm -hmm. they, 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 you know, are staying in the game so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, even if that trade went so awfully, you know, it could have gotten so much worse. As you said, you know, it could have just been a clean wipe out and then God Valley would have had enough time to push down buildings and end the game at this point, but it's not like one of those games. As you said, uh, all lot Memphis on carry uh, and and Quatre making the sets to, to keep themselves on 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 a foot. But super shady with the wild charges, not being too bad with the sets themselves. Uh, the Grok sort of CC immunity is quite an issue to play against when you have some ba some uh, setters on the enemy team, but he can sort of disrupt it. But uh, I think that I believe that's the first Lord being fallen down, taken by God Valley. So now it's going to be pushing time for them. Okay, here we're going to see the set coming in from Camilla. Jumu on the front line, but it's going to be Camilla taken out pretty quickly by this Trinity Bull of. of, of uh, of Kairi here. We're going to see the last insanity coming out. It's going to actually be dodged by the Winter Truncheon from Pamuki. Well played from him there. But the penalty zone. I shot to the back line here. Lands onto three. All lot coming in with the final slash. We'll take down Tony. He's actually fighting for his life here. But he will get finally taken out by Tokolosh. And Kairi will finish up Chong. This is look not looking good for Invictus Corp. It's going to be a one versus three situation. A one versus four, excuse me. Make it five if you can't lord. Okay, the Frigid Glacier missing out though. See, Quatre might be able to get a pretty decent set here once his ult comes up cooldown. He's just waiting for it to to not be on cooldown here. But they, I mean, I think God Valley can trust try and push this one down. They do, Lord is doing a lot of damage to the buildings, but it will eventually fall. And now the rest of the Victor's Corp has, has respawned. But uh, yeah, I mean, they're pushing in the lanes pretty well. Taking down the bottom tower now, going for the top. Chong in Memphis, gonna be done cleaning up Judy there. It, it, it is a bit up to, uh, yeah, these two, our two friends, Quatre and Memphis, to maybe give themselves uh, an opportunity to come back in this game, but at the moment it's looking so difficult. The sun's not really online yet, uh, and I feel like sun as a hero also is a sort of a split pushing hero. But with the map locked down like this, it's not easy for him to do anything. Yeah, I guess if he somehow gets the opportunity to la to to go around and get get into the back line, then he could have some shot. But there is the Aurora to deal with as well, who is good into dive heroes. Yeah, exactly. As now we might see a tower dive coming here. The tower frozen up by Aurora, making it easy tower for them to get. We're gonna see a conceal play coming in from Shady. They want to try and end this game now. Wild charge with a flicker. Now onto two. Doesn't really hit a it doesn't really hit a wall though. It's gonna be killing spree for Kairi once again. And now they don't have that set potential anymore. Oh look at that penalty zone though. It's onto the back line. Tony gets Pimuki. And now this is gonna be the end of the game. God Valley taking game one.
believe in this will be a best of three. Or is it not? You have to correct me. What's your, what are your thoughts, Doof? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was just just a bit, um, bit of farmish. I mean, Carmilla and Arlot was doing uh, doing the best they can to keep their team in the game. I just feel uh, the Chong pick, I mean, sorry, the Sun pick was uh, underwhelming. Uh, if uh, if you know Chong picked a, a character that uh, went a bit better with the team comp with the the sets that they could make they could put potentially actually have turned this game around uh but yeah i mean let's wait for the second game i'm just gonna have to restart the game quickly no worries <clears throat> Just, uh, Sometimes you can tell a person is special the first time you meet them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I've managed to get my phone charging again. Oh, no, no, it's not. Oh, mics are oh, mics are closed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's open now. I was talking <clears throat> in the way that you know, <laughs> it was. I thought I was talking to people, but uh, yeah. Are we open? Yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, that was game one for MLIO, uh, God Valley versus Invictus Corp. We will have um our game two here in this best of three. Uh, we're just waiting on one more member from Invictus Corp to join up. A quite a solid performance by God Valley here with a pretty pretty like a convincing sort of game for them. But it'll be up to Invictus Corp to sort of show their teeth as well. Maybe in the second game, I believe their players are very strong, so we might see a, a bit of a reverse sweep here. Yeah, um I th I think one of the things that Invictus Core needs to work on is definitely the marksman being way too aggressive for no reason, and that's basically allowed. Um, who is it again? Well, I know it was the carry to to get behind on farm and uh, not being able to deal with Hanabi uh, hit for hit. You know. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and Hanami's not really a hero your mental is laying against too much. I mean, I believe she got nerfed with... Has that nerf gone through where she can't hit uh, yeah. people's bushes yeah. and to reduce range? So, like, I feel like Hanabi shouldn't be a hero that you're losing lane to, yeah. She's not the strongest laner, especially with the changes. And So, for Hanabi, yeah. I don't know. I, I know they nerfed her, but I don't know exactly what they buffed her because I did play against her in lane. Uh, it was definitely 
easier to lane against because obviously the petals aren't hitting you as much as they were before. But if you just go into a first fight with her, she's definitely going to win because you do have an actual battle spell. Uh, what do you mean? Um, Aegis uh, instead of Flicker. Like oh, uh, right. Yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hanami, I hear that is very reliant on the ages in order to keep her CC immunity up. But it looks like where everybody's ready, we should be starting soon. As my phone has decided to stop charging again. Oh no. Your team is banning. All right. So jumping into. The second game of uh, Amalio group stages. I wonder, I mean, um, Invictus Core is first pick, so I wonder if they're going to have any uh, strategies for it. Uh, I feel like they could pull something out the bag. The match is a bit weird right now, for sure. Uh, all I hear is that were very very strong in the last few patches aren't really now uh other than like a few standout few such as let's say the diggy and the uh i guess the martis uh, in the, at least in the south african server i know that martis is not very popular well not as popular as in other servers uh just because i don't know, people may maybe know how to play it or maybe well no maybe know how to play against it or maybe we just know how to Make this here shine in our server, but uh, probably the former. <laughs> yeah, we do see the Roger being bang banned out as well as the Martis. Um, definitely directed against uh, Tony. I mean, with Roger, once he gets, you know, if you somehow um, let him get farmed, he can be like a Martis. He's just, you know, just uh, glazing through your entire team and there's not much you can do about it mm -hmm. looks like Tony's opting to maybe pick now i mean i'm not sure if he should throw his uh his pick just yet but we're gonna see tokolosh slamming in that nana <laughs> uh i do like this hero a lot i feel like it is very strong right now so i'm not arguing against that but uh we're gonna see we'll be kauri again on the hanabi Uh, as well as Bendu picking up the, the carry once again. Uh, he needs to, yeah, he needs a bit of a reality check when it comes to laning against Tanabe here. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure he can, I'm sure he's he's a bit more confident going into this time. I mean, he's confident enough to pick it again. Uh, so maybe he'll be a bit more wary of ganks, because I feel like that's how he lost his last lane. As well, gonna, they're going to pick the Vexana for themselves again. Uh, I'm not too much of a fan of the Vexana pick, hey? Uh, it takes quite a lot of time for her damage to come online. I mean, as with most mages, right? But the way you use it, you, ha you have to kind of utilize this hero as, as well as you can. So make use of the first skill uh, to, to, you know, get those ganks, ca camp those enemies if you have to be a bush baby. Use that first skill to its uh, best value because it's going to take you at least two or three items in to finally get your damage. And um, what is the ultimate called again? Uh, for Vexana, it's the yeah. Eternal Guard. The Eternal Guard, he doesn't really do much. He's just there for making the set. So unless you have someone just standing still for a solid like three seconds, even then uh, that... that Eternal Guard isn't doing much damage hit for it, so you really want to rely on the second skill to be your main source of damage. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I feel like, yeah, the Eternal Guard is just a bit of a there for show. <laughs> uh, when, uh, I think the most use that he does do, though, is if you do the combo correctly on Vexana, you should be initiating with the Eternal Guard. And then while you're sort of locking them down with your first skill, he will be able to get one or two hits in as a sort of guarantee so yeah uh, that's, uh, that's honestly that's how you know when i went through like this um a few days where i just spamming vexana uh that's what i started doing because the eternal guard is just a more reliable source of um 
of an initiation rather than the first kill because it does have a, a longer range, right? And it can hit more people. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a bit it's a bit harder to see coming as well. Yeah, yeah it just uh, drops on you, bro. Yeah, so it falls it's definitely. On your head. Well, we have to be seeing if Dark Muto uh, comes in with that with that sort of combo. It's a, it's a lot more reliable and it does more damage. Anyway, oh. we're gonna see Chung picking up his signature Hanzo here, which was banned on the first game. So I'm interested to see how he does how uh, God Valley plays against this one. Yeah, we do see a bit of a, a role shift a here. Role switch. Uh, yeah, Jinu going to jungle just wants to flex his uh, YSS a bit, but I do like the Hanzo pick, especially against the Hanabi. And the Nana, you can just keep popping the, you know, the ages, the battle spells, um, the Nana passive. So this yeah, Hanzo sure. is going to be quite annoying, and this uh, is really the oh. roll switch, the roll switch again. <laughs> oh, no, Tony, Tony will take that uh, usanshin, oh, as it will be Jinwoo going for the, uh, right. going for the Y S, the Y Z, Y S S and Y Z. I, I can't say I'm a big fan. Of the Florin pick, especially with the Hanzo there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and the x -Borg. I feel like those are two heroes that don't really utilize Florin's ulti too well. Uh, with, like, x -Borg, he's able to, like, uh, raise and lower his HP bar most of the time. You know, with the last insanity, he gets rid of his HP bar. And then when he's uh, when he's when when he doesn't have his Faraga armor, you know, the, the Florin ulti doesn't really heal him fully. Uh, and then Hanzo, obviously... He has two bodies to, to heal, and yeah. uh, one of them he doesn't care about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's a bit of a weird pick for me. I, I would think if they had maybe some sort of tank uh, to lock down the enemies for the loss of insanity and um, uh, what you might call it, the Hanzo body to, to hit, you know, um, much, much better. Yeah. As you going to see, the... the the uh, what you call it, the lantern of hope, <laughs> giving uh, Tong the flower of hope here. So they're all ending on this uh, on this Hanzo having a good game, I believe. Uh, but yeah, it's it's gonna be an interesting game, I think. Uh, I mean, already Dark Mutant is taking so much harass damage from Tokolo. So quite an interesting thing to see that Nana is such a lame bully. But uh, yeah, who do you think wins this XP lane? This XP lane? Uh, I think the Yuzong should win. But as it stands... Oh, it is it is um an Xborg with Aegis there. So his armor is going to be... It is going to be a bit more difficult to take down. <laughs> you see, I have Aegis. Okay, Jin, uh, okay, listen. Uh, Memphis, I'm not, uh, I'm not flaming you, but I'm just... Genuinely curious at how Expo does use that Aegis, but we'll have to see. Maybe keeping himself alive in Lost Insanity to, you know, make sure it goes off. Could be a viable strategy, for sure. Probably. But yeah, uh, Dark Mayuto getting poked out in the middle Ooh. there. Here, we're going to see the Mountain Shocker coming in from Yuzong. I mean, I mean from YSS. But it's going to be Tokolosh taking out the, uh, the kill even before the Mountain Shocker comes in. And then I said, hey, why, uh, you know, this is what I'm talking about, carry needs to be, needs to be, uh, less aggressive. Aggressive? Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, she was completely out of position in that fight. She just got, she went in onto four people, even though she just had, uh, one other, other person with her, which I believe was a Florin. Uh, and yeah, I mean, she just needs to be way more careful how she positions herself, for sure, I could agree. But it's going to be Tony playing that PVE gameplay, if you guys know what that means. <laughs> I'm going to see a start on, on Turtle there. Tony taking it down quite fast. Memphis on carry. Just going to... Oh, But uh, Jin, we will take out the floor in the back lines here. Not going to have access to that healing effect now. Super Shady as well, getting got on by Chong. He's going to use the Tyrant's Rage <laughs> to protect himself, but... A good dodge by Chong in the end. It's going to be the Mountain Shocker that takes down Bendu again. <laughs> oh my god. Well, Black Dragon form popped out here. Just to create a bit of space for Tony to get the turtle. Doesn't want any contestion to happen here. Especially when Tony is a bit less than half health. 
How, how is uh, Warx on, on, on YSS these days? I mean, it looks like uh, Tony's gonna go for it. As, oh, Nana actually gets taken down by Chong here. Yeah, this is the pressure that I'm talking about from the Hanzo onto this Nana and uh, the Hanabi. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, how do you feel about this uh, this war axe on, on YSS these days? I I heard that it doesn't work as as well as it did before. Like uh, YSS main, like Mobazane actually talking about it. We do see Memphis on carry getting the Ooh. kill. 1v1, I guess that's what the Aegis is now, and I actually didn't, <laughs> didn't activate the Aegis there. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna see the Mountain Chonky coming out, gonna do a bit of a rest, revealing those positions, what it's strong at doing. Oh, but Chong getting gone on here, but he, it's, it's just his phantom form with the Pinnacle Ninja, that's what his ult is called. Oh, we're gonna see. Oh, the Titan's Rage coming onto the floor, it should be an easy kill for Tony to pick up, finishing that War Axe with that amount of money now. I mean, I feel like it could work kind of well with the Mountain Shocker, uh, the Spell Amp, the Spell Vamp sort of uh, aspect to it, with that big amount of, like, a, it, it doesn't do that much damage, but it does damage to everyone. I see a bit of invade here, but Chong does... Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Tony, Tony will get the blue buff there, I think. Oh, no, no, no. did he eat it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, because I, 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 I guess he ate it. I thought the retribution was, was done. We're going to see the Pinnacle Ninja coming out from Chong here. Onto Kaori. Kaori should have the Venge I mean the the Aegis, so he's fine, but He does commit the Aegis, exactly. Yeah. We're gonna see Super Shady going in with the conceal play here. Bendu out of position again, but will be defended by Pimoki here with the heals and, and that revitalize. But now it's gonna be Kaori pushing in the tower, but I don't know if they can continue that much further. Uh Bendu uh, listen bro. I, I don't think you, you can go. I don't think you can go for this tank build anymore. Uh, it, like this, this ca casually. I feel like you need a bit of damage. I, I guess you might be going for the endless battle now. So, I guess that could work. Yeah. Also, I mean, before like when carry tank carry was a thing. Oh, it was. Oh, there, there we go. We're gonna see the retribution coming in. It goes to Tony. Tong, even with the pinnacle ninja, is not gonna be able to get the. The retribution sniper, but he might get the kill onto Tony though. A beautiful kill, actually. That's not. That's a pretty good kill to get. Yeah, but they do lose the tier one um, turret in the top lane there, and we see a bit of a skirmish between Bendu and Kaori. I mean, I mean, Bendu is kind of winning this one right yeah. here with that short amount of damage here, but it's going to be Pamuki again, taken out by Tekalosh, as he is a menace on this Nana right now. Chung breaking some ankles here, but Jin Wu commits the Black Dragon form just uh, just to say, hey, you know, the, this isn't how we're doing it here. <laughs> I'm in this game as well. <laughs> but yeah, Hanabi at the top of the net worth here by, by quite a margin. So she's going to be pumping in that damage as per usual. Oh, but a Petrify coming in from Jin Wu here. Going to just be on the Pinnacle Ninja form there. See a bit of a. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, um, but look at the shady. Oh, but shady has the conceal, so he's not targetable right now. He's gonna get taken out on Bendu. Good rotation coming in from Tony. Yeah, um, uh, Bendu, Bendu had you know enough time to actually get out of there instead of pressing further on, but he did actually want that kill. Mm -hmm. Chong going in with the pinnacle ninja, just there to clear the way, really. Uh, I don't know if that was too necessary because Vixan is like just chilling now in the middle lane. Like, where's my minions at? <laughs> but I, I guess it is up to Chong to carry the game. So maybe getting the farm towards him could be a viable sort of option. Uh, we're going to see the turtle being spawned out here in about five seconds. The map control from God Valley, though, it's a bit difficult to break here. There's a little bit of recall action coming in from Shady here. <laughs> he knows that they can't really contest this turtle, and if they try, they're going to have to pay for it. Yeah, but I mean, look at the to... amount of damage that Jinwoo is doing on, on the Xbox there. He's going to oh, get taken but, out. But the Bloom coming in from Florin doesn't... He, I, I, as I was just saying in the draft. Yeah. 
like the bloom coming in doesn't really heal the Xbox that much as we're gonna see Super Shady going into the Flicker Tyrant's Rage. But yeah, once if if, the, if your Xbox doesn't ha is like doesn't have his armor, then that bloom is just kind of wasted on him, you know. Yeah, for sure. If Don't you know you what, think, um, like an Angela <laughs> would have been better here. You do see Tony going oh. onto the Vexana there. Shady missing out on the jump, but the Froga armor is popped out. We're gonna see Chong just trying to get that. Uh, that uh, tier one <laughs> mid lane turret. Oh, but he ran out of energy. He had to. He would have been able to finish it, but he ran out of that spread energy. But yeah, uh, do you, you do know what I'm talking about with the bloom, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <I> okay. <laughs> Just making sure I'm not. Uh, whatever I'm saying is not going over your head here. It, it, As we're gonna see Tom yeah. going in, he's gonna get controlled up there by Nana. He needs to, yeah, he needs to get back before his body gets stunned. We're going to see Vexana getting gone on the Bloom committed. It's not going to be able to save her. They've got more than enough damage. Black Dragon Form as well. He's going to be hunting down Bendu. I, don't, I think he's in a bit of danger here. Shady misses out the first kill though. And the knockup as well misses out. So Bendu's going to be just fine right now. Finnick and Ninja coming in from Chong. I look at Jinwoo in the that, back Nana. there. He's going to get that Belina Blessing away from Nana. Oh, the Aegis! It got it got hit by the anti heal, so it only gave that half effect, and it didn't. He had he committed the Aegis, and it just just blew, blew up his uh, his Faraga armor. So it's a bit of a wasted resource there. Super shady, looking to go in here, but I don't know if these are the best targets for him to do. I'm gonna see the Pinnacle Ninja going in here onto Tony, but I think Tony is just too way too. Too mobile for anything to happen. Uh, Anabi it does have her core items set in. Oh, but look at that double kill! Well, like not double kill, but the two kills coming in from God Valley here. Even with the bloom, they're not safe from it. Oh, Memphis! So he gets a kill on the Super Shady, but it's gonna have to cost him. It's gonna be a double kill for this Nana. Shut down onto Nana though. They will eventually get the kill on the Tokolosh and Chong. Oh, that's a big kill for God Valley to get. They don't have their big carry Hanzo here again. And now, Tony using a mountain shocker <laughs> with, with zero people alive. Okay, if that's not a display of dominance, I don't know what is. I don't really know why he went back to base there, but I mean, it is what it is. I, oh, he's collecting his turtle ship. Yeah, I mean, he wants to get his buffs and he wants to collect his ship, so why not? Why not go? I mean, uh, the entire team of Invict Invictus Core was uh, respawning there, so it would have been too much to just chill <laughs> in their base and fight 1v5, you know? Mm -hmm. So, we're gonna see a Lord being spawned out here. Tony should be hitting level 15 soon. We're going to see the Mountain Shocker just scouting out the positions of the enemies. Pinnacle Ninja there. In the middle lane onto Shady, but he can't really win that one. They're going to get be able to get Chong here. He's slowed down. Ooh. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh my god. There's no chance to live whatsoever. Memphis are carrying a bit of danger here. Has the Aegis committed? Lost Insanity as well. Tony might be a bit in danger here, but he does dodge out the last hit of the final Insanity. The last Insanity, I mean. But yeah, I mean, Memphis making a decent amount of space for his team. We'll get back now, nice and safe to his base. But Lord, it's charging down the middle lane. They'll have Chong back up now, so they still have another chance to come back and... Yeah, I mean, this is uh, just the basic Lord, so they should be able to clear it unless they get Ooh, set but there we go. like this. Oh, Bendu, yeah, gets caught by the Tyrant's Rage, straight into the hand of Tokolosh. As now the Pinnacle Ninja comes out from Chong, but he's taking so much damage, man, he can't really use it. He's just going to have to fight this Lord in his base body form now. As now the Eternal God does whiff on everyone, pretty much. The Black Dragon form comes out, they're going to be able to focus down the tower here. Didn't we're doing a really good job of zoning them out? This is gonna be the end of the game. God Valley will take the series two to nil.
Yeah, uh, Invictus Core did do a better job uh, at playing and even in the draft in the first game. Um, I think they definitely messed up the draft on the second game, you know, with the, um, with all of this, you know, uh, Florin with the Hanzo, with the Expo, something like Angela would have been definitely better, but not optimal. Um, mm -hmm. so what do you think about this? What do you think about this uh, brute force breastplate on, 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 on uh, Florin? I'm not sure about that one. Don't think I've ever seen that before. Uh, I mean, like I said, it's, it's like you can have it. It's not uh, optimal though. Um, mm -hmm. uh, something like brute force breastplate. No, no, no not brute force. Uh, antique curse would have been better. Uh, yeah, especially with all the skill damage coming out from the Yuzong and Pony. I feel like that would have definitely been a better pickup. Yeah, but I guess um, I guess with the way you're going to be spamming skills with Florin, I guess you you would be able to get your stacks. Um, gives you you know movement speed, which is good as well. Gives you um, oh, magic power, I believe now uh, after they they did some adjustments. So the heals would become stronger. But brute force breast, breastplate. I don't think it. I don't think it. Uh, I don't think it, it gives you magic power. Uh, yeah, oh, it, it does. does. It does. Oh, it does. Yeah. Oh my god. So there is that. But yeah. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm, my phone is just about to die. I believe that's all the games for tonight for Maleo. Or is yeah. More? Uh, that's uh, that's about it. So yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you for the next stream. Um, either MLIO or enter the Equilibrium Nigeria Season 1. Have a yep. good night. Okay. Yeah, good night, guys. Yeah. See you.